Next up, we have Django with uh, Tango with Django with Jane Shukla. Jane Shukla is a full stack developer by profession, a computer scientist by heart, and an actor by Gene. He's a speaker, Weimer, blogger, and an organizer of PyCourge. Please give him a round of applause. Hello. Uh, so, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Jai Singh Shukla, and uh, today I will introduce you with the Django. Uh, so, basically, the talk is about uh, pre uh, beginner session of the Django, and uh, normally, I have seen that uh, students are facing some kind of learning curve while they are. Uh, trying their first hand with the Django. So uh, in this talk, I, I will try to introduce them with the depth of the framework uh, with a very low level stuff. And uh, I hope you people will like and then you will be able to uh, start with the Django very nicely. Uh, so if you already, uh, if you are aware with the framework, then this talk might not be, uh, might, might not be helpful to you. So uh, it's it's like those who want to start uh, very first time with the Django, they can implement it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I request if you are interested, you can directly implement uh, with me so that you can learn as much as you can. And uh, if you have any question, raise your hand. I will stop and solve your doubt first. Normally this took more than two hours actually uh i took six or five hours session but yeah uh, because of time constraint we'll skip the uh, very uh, a kind of non-related part and we'll focus on basics first so let us start with the uh my introduction uh this are you can find me i mean yeah please don't forget to tweet about me uh during the session and w whatever your reviews are uh Take me with the Jaising P uh, handler. I am also available on IRC with the nickname of uh, the Big J. Uh, if you are having uh, any 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 questions, uh, don't hesitate to mail me. Uh, I am to it to your email also, so you can mail your questions and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Uh, I'm a self-employed uh, Python Nista, so I mostly work uh, as a full stack developer. Uh, on a juggling between Angular and the Django with the backend. I also write a blog. I had just started a couple of months ago. Uh, so yeah, you can read my blog on blog.jc.com. Uh, I usually uh, started with few book reviews and conference reviews and everything. Uh, so yeah, uh, you, you people must be aware that uh, w what the Django is. So Django is a very popular web framework Almost every Django developer are aware with the, this word. Uh, normally, I have seen that people are aware with the framework, but they are not aware with the actual construction of the framework. And they they find that Django has a bit hard learning curve than any of the framework uh, like Flask and Web2Py and everything. Uh, but I think uh, when we consider any framework, that framework is designed with a specific use case. Uh, so it, it matters really that what are your use cases. And uh, if you have a specific use case, 
then you have to choose a web framework according to your use case. Uh, so let us talk about little history. Uh, so Django was started 10 years, I mean more than 10 years ago actually. Uh, it was started by Lawrence, the general world. That's a very popular news publishing company. Uh, so their developer, uh, they, they were publishing news and they started as a website. So they were looking uh, something in which they can quickly publish their uh, news and update their website without any hassle. So it's all started in that that manner, and step by step, the they they made uh, open source it, and now uh, Django is developed under Django Software Foundation, and uh, it's it's a non-profit organization, uh, very vast. They have their elections and everything, so it's very vast. So the framework is very huge. You can see, I mean, once it is uh, a decade, uh, more than one decade old, it means developers have uh, must have invested their time to make a framework very friendly. Uh, personally, I have seen there are a lot of benefits, uh, but these are what I believe of using Django. Uh, first of all, it's an open source framework. Uh, I'm not sure about what what licensing it is containing, but I think it's a GPL con uh, compatible license. So Django is open source, uh, community driven project. Whatever you want, you can come to the community and you can implement. That is the very uh, nice part of Django. Django is a large community. Probably there are there are many many uh, developers over there. So other other Django events, uh, Django under the hood. So you can you can be a part of it. We are also having Django India mailing list. Uh, it's there are no conferences happening in India, but yeah, it's going on. Django Bangalore or Django 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 India, I think. Uh, so when a web framework came, uh, normally the part of MVC is very popular in a web developer. Django is a MVC, like you can separate your model view and controller part. Uh, that is the that is the one of the advantage of any web framework. And I, I think uh, once you are considering any web framework, then the the part of MVC really matters because I have seen none of the framework which are not MVC. I mean, all all are in the same category. Like MVC web framework should be MVC. That is by default. Why it's secure? Uh, well, uh, to be very frank, my experience uh, what was with uh, Django is not. My my experience with the Django is not too old. Like, so I was a uh, uh, another o ERP framework developer, and then I started developing. I, I was aware with the web, and my fundamentals of HTTP was okay, so that I can I can grab a web framework and I started. Uh, so at that time, assume a situation in which you are you are having the responsibility of starting one website in which you want to authenticate your client, and you want to do and uh, a proper secure authentication, right? Uh, because it must be related with money or any any of the other thing. So in that particular part, if you are choosing any of the other framework, you must be including some other uh, packages in which they can do your own fundamental uh, authentication part or any of the other secure session part, right? But in Django, the fun part is it, it is also called a batteries included framework. Like all the things what you need, that's in the Django. So whatever you will do, it will be available in, in the Django. There are session middlewares. There are authentication middlewares. There are uh, static deployment middlewares, your migrations. So as a fresh developer, you will have very less chance of making mistake, right? Because once you're implementing mistake, at least your authentication should not be a false, right? That's a very base part. So it, it is provided by Django so that you can mistake on uh, other parts which, will, which, which you will do, but you will not make a mistake on uh, the core part which is very important for your website, right? And it really helps. Like novice developer can grab, use this large level API, and they can all remain uh, hassle-free from that, that noise, right? Uh, that is very nice advantage according to me. Fast web application development. While I have seen, like uh, in a 
in a startup or any other company, they will always need a quick shit done methodology, right? So probably we have to do it in a very quick way. And things like Python is also <laughs> one, uh, more popular on that side. And a Django, I have seen, because it was developed in a very fast environment, like newsroom environment as a very fast environment in which you have to update your site very quickly, you have to deploy it very quickly because it's news and it hits, uh, you have to maintain it also periodically, right? Because of that mentality, Django is also allowing you to start a project, work on it, customize it, and deploy it very fastly, right? And you, you have to maintain it, you have to implement it, everything is included. So your application development time has increased. Like once you are developing, if you consider other, other uh, frameworks like Flask and uh, also PHP, you have to yourself customize everything, import everything, and then start work. But here, when you start initial website, everything is there. It's really fast on that part. It's a scalable too. Uh, though I clearly agree, it's not fast and compared to other websites, but if you deploy well, yeah, you will get a nice nice uh, speed and ND performance. ORM is very nice advantage. Like, you, you'll say you, will ma you are making a database queries and that those queries you have to manually take, you have to manually parse. You are, when you start, you go with the MySQL, when you do some other thing, you go with the other database engine like Postgres. So those changes affect your code. Here, because of the ORM, the level of database queries is isolated. So for example, you are changing your database. You started with MySQL, and now your boss is telling, let us include uh, Postgres. MySQL is performance dump. And at the time, you'll just change one line, adding, a, adding a, that controller of uh, database engine, and you're done. I mean, you will not change any any other part of your code. So that is very nice part. Uh, DRY, like, it's always don't repeat yourself. I will, we will come to this point and we'll see. Yeah, p power of Python. Uh, I will, I will agree with you people that, uh, I, I will guide you uh, that, do not, do not uh, go with the Django, go with the Python, right? And once you improve your Python, you can improve any framework. Django is one framework. All you will do is grab the documentation while you're developing, and you will be able to develop that part. Uh, so power of language matters, and there are many, many more stuff. Who are using uh, Django? You'll be surprised. <coughs> Mozilla add-ons are built on the Django. Bitly are there. Instagram is very popular, right? It's completely using Django. <coughs> Yahoo groups, uh, it's now dead probably, but if you are a very old guy, uh, you must be remembering. Uh, Yahoo Groups was very popular. Uh, Bitbucket is there. Uh, Pinterest and uh, other popular site. So they are all uh, developed in Django. Now there is one more uh, terminology I have seen. Like Django is considered as a MVT rather than MVC. Now what is the MVT, which is model view template. Uh, and it's very similar part to MVC, but if someone is telling that Django is MVT, then you should not be a surprised one. Django is actually MVC, but as a one terminology, it contains one another part, which is called template, right? Uh, yeah, so now let's, uh, let's start, uh, because I think what I will do is I will try to implement how as a how you should initialize uh, with the Django and how you should begin. Uh, as a part of this session, I will try to create one blog application uh, without any CSS and JavaScript part uh, to just demonstrate you how Django renders, how Django executes, how Django works, right? <coughs> so first of all, we will create a virtual environment. And you can use a couple of options. You, if you are using uh, Python 2.7 uh, latest version after 11 and uh, Python 3.5x uh, versions, then you will be available with the VENV module, which is inbuilt for creating your virtual environments. Uh, there is popular called virtual environment wrapper, 
uh, which is very nice uh, developer use I use so I will recommend to use it and that is virtual env package also so yeah L let me start and create those one Is it fine? Okay. So uh, here, here I will try to create a virtual environment first. So I will use a virtual e environment wrapper. Uh, we'll we will use a Python three. So, yep. Please remember we are using Python three. Once you are created, you'll be aware with this thing. This means your virtual environment is activated. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you should be aware with the virtual concept of the virtual environment, right? Now my virtual environment is activated. Now we'll install the Django dependency. I am here using 1.8, uh, which is LTS. So, yeah, I'll also advise you to use 1.8. This is pip command. I hope you are aware with the pip utility, right? OK, so you are done. Now, first step, when you are initializing any Django project, is to start your application, start your website, right? So there are concepts in Django in which you start a website first and then you try to import the particular app in it both are different so first we'll start a website so command is django admin So now let us see. This is my site. Uh, let us walk through it. I hope uh, we'll see what what it is it has created initially, right? So the command is Django admin. Once you will install Django, you will be able to get that command, and then you will say start project, and then your name of your site. we had created my site right now my site has uh, first it has created a manage.py for us so let us see what is manage.py uh, so you can see manage.py has created this file uh, this line is a hash bang part uh, it's a unix hacker style you can call it this script with the dot slash so dot means it will automatically grab uh, appropriate interpreter and this is nothing but just creating your settings file we'll walk through the setting file so it is all by default created by Django right and you can see my site is our site name it has an added as a setting file you can change this this is the environment variable right so and Windows Linux we all declare a lot of environment variables this this will help you a lot once you want to separate your develop developer environment with the production environment normally we create a two settings file one for development environment one for the production environment then there is one nice utility called execute from command line whatever command you will have you will execute from it and it will execute system.arg so it is system.arg means whatever you will provide it will take and execute with this thing 
will never update this miniature py i have never updated during my lifetime but i was going through to demonstrate you what this thing is now let us it has already created one more sub file uh, sub directory which is my site and you'll see it has created wsgi.py file urls.py file settings.py file so why django is creating this kind of stuff is that once we are learning some web framework i have seen that people are not managing a nice and clear way to develop anything and that's why they merge everything in a one file or probably two but all are not in a sensible manner right uh, django allows us to make a very sensible thing uh, with the separate things so that we can go we can use it we can update it right let us the most important part uh, file is the settings.py file now in the settings.py file the all all the settings of your website is there right a, a, a website so once you apply any setting that is directly that will affect directly your website all it is created by default so you can see uh, base dir security key yeah it's a security uh, key unique key already generated but i hope by default is not that much secure so you can you have to always update it allowed host is like uh, once you are deploying your website if you are aware uh, allowed origin uh, it's a similar term but it will refute all the requests from other host if you are aware about http structure now installed apps uh, we will come to the part of this letter there are middleware classes we will also come to this part later this is the template configurations this looks very much uh, very much uh, advanced when you are beginning but once you are familiarizing with the development stuff it is very nice actually as a developer i will say so this is database settings and you can also change the language code and everything uh, this is the static url and everything so probably we'll do nothing this time on a settings file this is just a walk through on our settings file uh, debug parameter is very helpful like you should not look it is also putting a warning that you should not put this thing true once you are in a production why because it will give some loopholes to the person if your application is crashed if it is false then it will be behaving securely and it will return just 500 but it will also put a trash back on your admin log so that's a very nice thing to remember uh, it is uh, helpful once you are developing but not helpful once you are in a production these are a bunch of contribution apps so i was speaking that uh, i was i already mentioned the point that django is pretty secure right these are the admin authentication app which is given by community uh, the content types various if you want to serve session is there messaging framework to internally connect to process and everything static files is there so all are part of a contribute contribution module and it is not part of your website like you can grab it and you can see it then there is urls.py file You can see this is the admin is already included. We'll come to this point, but this is the file in which all your controller part. This is considered as a controller. Like once your request is coming, it will first go to your website's URL.py. Then it will look through the part that this URL request is coming to which URL, right? It will match it. And then it will call subsequent views of that part. Then view will perform its step. Then it will call a template. Template will render, and it will respond. So their whole chain will be then responsive to the client, right? We'll come to this point. Oh, sorry.
So any questions on here? I mean, we have created website. Uh, any any kind of questions from you people? Should I move forward? Fine. Okay. So this is the we have created site. Now, uh, yeah. Now after creating your site, I will say you should always create a requirements.txt file. Uh, requirements.txt file is very important probably it is like it will all dump your all the dependencies to a file which is very important as a part of a uh, uh, thing so and the name is not fixed it's a convention how you can say like we are you are a bunch of <coughs> five or six developers and I have used few libraries how I will say to them that this I have used uh, five or six uh, li libraries with this versions, right? So it is all part of requirements to txt file. So I'll, I'm I'm creating that with the command pip freeze, and I'll redirect it to the yeah. And please commit this file. Like you have to commit your requirements to txt file so that you're you are working on this project with another workstation or you are sharing this project with your core developers they can directly come in fire pip install dash r and then requirements for txt so that all the dependencies are automatically included right so like this you have to commit it this are the we installed django but this for the dependencies so it has all it it is also installed with it very nice uh we have seen i mean this this are the thing uh django created for us now this is website normally have seen in our framework web framework website means everything you put it in and you go it right but in django there is one concept called apps right apps is as a portable thing like for example you are uh you are a consultant and there is one request coming to develop a forum question answer like Quora right so you will write our code all, all of your code for that managing that stuff and then <coughs> you'll say okay I have deployed you give it to the client one another request is coming after two months that okay uh, we want to deploy our blog so you write again code of block blog for blog and then you deploy it to your client now there is one another party who is coming to you and saying I want to I want uh, uh, the functionality of forum now in that particular case what you will do right you'll rewrite a code but if you are using Django then you have the functionality to separate your application part with the website part so application is a pluggable object right like you create a functionality like base functionality of forum base functionality for blog and make it as a one app now whenever you want to implement a forum or any other kind of functionality you grab that app and put it into your website those auth module uh, session module static module those are apps right and one fun part is that Django is also managing their uh, app gallery in which all the Django developers share and maintain few apps so for example if you want to start with the forum app then you can grab any popular app from it install it as a pip package and all you will be done right all you will be done like you have to customize the CSS and everything and all you will be done right it's very important part because it's follow it, it follows DRY don't repeat yourself right so every every time we will not implement those uh, those things uh, which will be common applicable to rest of the applications or other applications so always create a create a app I have seen like most most developers who are aware with the app they create their application in just one app that's very bad idea try to separate with the one concept for example I'm in I'm implementing a rest API then my my app there should be one app which will handle all the rest API part authentication 
create new app for managing all the authentication part. This will save you a lot and in, in, in the maintainability, database management, everything you will be able to do. So now, because we want to write our own blog, we will not use the website part, but we will create one app so that we can use that app to other website also, right? Let us create our app. First time we will use Django admin. After that, we will use manage.py. Because manage.py is now aware. Manage.py will provide your settings to Django admin, right? So manage.py is a one wrapper over admin, Django admin command. Once you are creating your website, you have to use this, like your manage.py. Because manage.py will allow also a few other settings. I'm firing help command to make you guys demonstrate that what kind of commands it has. Uh, like authentication, create super user, Django check, compile, db shell, you can see flush and lo lot of commands. All are documented, you can use. Fun part is, you can also write your custom commands. Normally in a production, we write few custom commands in which we directly do monoclub py and this, and that command will do all the uh, stuff, right? So it's also a nice part. Now we'll create a app. I'll say start app and blog. You can see it has created blog directory, right? Now we'll walk through this blog directory, what it has created. Okay, so you can see uh, it has already created test.py, uh, a view file for us, a model file for us, migrations, admin.py file, right? Now, assume, I mean, if, if I was a novice developer and I was developing a website uh, with some other framework, then I will combine everything in one file and then it will look very messy, right? If it is test, then I will write test underscore that file and every, everything will look very messy. But here, uh, we'll be able to, we will have a nice separation and it's a convention also. So you will have room to update and maintain it. First we'll see the models.py file. I'm opening it. So models.py file is uh, MVC, so it's M part, right? M part means it's directly related with your database. Whatever we'll create, it will create a table. A very common way to identify your model.py is that model.py is one table, right? One table in your in your DB, okay? So whatever kind of column it should have, you will mention with their specific data types. And Django will be able to identify that what type of thing you are doing, okay? Uh, let us, we will come to this thing. Uh, other files like admin, test view is also important. Uh, test in which you will write a test for your views, for your models, uh, anything you can do. Migrations files are important. Let me come to this point later. Uh, view files in which you will be able to write a view, which is V part, right? Uh, so now assume a situation. Uh, so let us, for example, we want to start a, a, a blog application, right? We want to create an, one app in which it will manage a blog. Can you guys suggest what kind of fields it should have, like as a structure? of the class objects, uh, what kind of fields a blog object should have? Title, yeah, okay, title. Then you, any anyone can, sorry? Yeah, date and time, and when it is, it has created, right? Create date. Create date title, then. Author, author, right? So who, who, 
who is the author of particular blog post, right? Author, right? And then main the blog post actually, and then whether it is what content it should have, so body part of the blog, right? Uh, any other? Yeah, la last updated that is also fine. But normally, what I have seen is uh, like large magazines do not create, uh, do not maintain their history of updation. Like if it's a community driven, then it's fine. But I have never seen any news application for managing a update updation thing. And uh, what I will, what I have added is like to whether to publish, make it publish or not. Sometimes we want to keep it in a draft state, right? Uh, and then publish it later. So here is the structure I have cre created. Like as I assume, as an assumption, a post will have this kind of attributes like title, a text, which is the body of it, then a create date when it has actually created, published, whether it is published or not, published means it will be available to your website, otherwise it will be not. Author, right? So number of authors, uh, it's a relation part. So first, let us try to create a model for it. C can you people hear me? Fine? Okay. So, because I will need the two of my hands here. I'm creating class. Yeah, I'm creating class uh, called post. And for creating a database model, you have to inherit model dot model right that's a base class available to you then you can say def define your fields fields are uh, very similar to columns so here i will say title now title is belonging to which field now django maintains type of the field right so title will be belonging to which field? Text. Text, but we have specifically a character type over here. So we'll assign models dot care field. So the care field is a subclass actually. And that has one required attribute which is max length. We will say a 200 length of title, right? Uh, this is very similar to creating your table in your database right so whatever you will create in your database at that time this layer will make you separate now i will say text models dot text field now we have create date which is models dot yeah exactly date time field and uh, there are two attributes uh, which people use normally uh, which is add now so it will automatically overwrite the part of your uh, date and time i mean the date and time now right import date and time and date and time dot now so it is the past time so it will automatically add this date and time right Then we'll have a published, which is Boolean field according to me. Like it will have either true or false value. And uh, by default, uh, once you are declaring Boolean, it will be uh, activated as a true. But what I'm doing is, you can also assign a default value. So default is false. Right? And. Uh, we are not creating author at this time. So we can take this one. So I am okay. yeah. now we have created our model, right? Now the next part is to create a migration. Now the part of migrations is very important. What it is, uh, let us first do and then see what the migrations is. So command for 
uh, I think first we should add our this new app to our installed apps. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm adding this my newly created app to my settings to know that this app should be installed. So I'm going back to my site and there is settings that you to add in this part so what name of our app was that is blog so we will add blog we'll save it after doing this first is to create a migration right so we will write a command Make migrations is one command. Once we will apply, okay, there is one error. So there is two actually, auto now and auto now eight. Auto now will it is for update, right? So created, you will assume once we are creating a new record, we will not update it. But if you want to make a new field like someone suggested, we should create an update history. So if you will make if you want to create an update history, then it we will create auto now. And if we want to make a create, which is like once we update our field, the date and time will not be updated. Once we create, it will only create it once. Right? So auto now in is for us. Auto now in for us. But suppose you want, you want to create, but you want to update, then you will do auto now only. Huh? Ah, that has created migration, right? So this stuff will tell that migration is created for blog and 001 initial.py file, right? Where it has created under your app directory, there will be a folder called migrations. You can see this is the file in Jenga stating. Normally I have seen people are very afraid of this file because the syntax of it is very complicated and a fast loop. It is not. Once you have a migration file, always open it and try to look at what is what is it. Let us see. You can see Jenga has created one class in which it is telling dependency. So this is initial migration, it is not dependent. Operations is one parameter. And it has called create model. And don't worry, you will never do with this thing, except in a few situations, right? So as a starting, you will see, once we have created model, it has already added ID field for us, right? So, I mean, we were not getting any kind of ID for any, but it has Clego has already created a different one for us, and it is auto filled integer, primary key also. So, you'll see, I mean, everything is created by Jenga. Title according to us, text field, create time, 
created, created it and published his bullion field. Now commit all your migrations. What is migrations? Migrations are like once you are a core developer or a bunch of few developers, you will share your migrations with them so that whatever change you will have, you will give to them and then they will apply those migrations, right? So assume, if I will write a database, like I have created one table, one sorry, issues. Now I am adding new field in my table. So how, will, I, will I dump those table with my commit? No, what I will do is, I will dump my migrations. And then that migrations will be applied by other developers, so that they will have the same state of my DB, whatever I have, right? So always commit your migrations. Uh, this is this is this has created my created migrations. Now what we will do? We will apply those migrations. So apply is the command in which those migrations will be applied to your DB, right? Actual data will be created on your DB. Like your it will create a table, it will create columns, it will assign a data type, it will assign primary key, indexing, everything. If you change your model. Remember, you have to call make migration first and then migrate command. I am firing right now. Now you will assume we installed, we have created only one app, which was blog. And we have created only one migration. And why these other kind of migrations are there? Can, can you guess why this, this kind of other migrations are there? Uh, so these are the contributed apps. Like you will, you will see, uh, I have already demonstrated the contributed app, <laughs> like auth, the session, and everything. So those apps are also in tables, right? So when we do migrate, installed apps has also migrated. So it has applied the look auth content type migration. They will also have their own database, right? So you will see, you have already plugged in other apps in your website by default, right? And here is your blog one, initial, then session one, right? So this is created by us, but rest is not created by us. It's already there by other app. This is fine. Now we have, we are having state in our database, okay? Now let us see how it is behaving. Uh, any doubts to tell me here? Any, any question? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so once you are updating or adding new field to your model.py, right? f.model.py, right? That means you are changing thing. After that, you have to create first make migration command. Yeah, so make migration, once you update your model, that means you are expecting those change to your DB table, right? So you, when you will do make migration, it will grab those change and create a migration for it. That means you are, you are creating those, then will create those migration files under migrations directly, right? This is done. Now, second part is to use apply those migrations. There are two steps. You create those migrations and then you apply it. Okay. It is diff possibly, I have seen in a developer uh, in a developer environment, you update your model, you commit it, but you do not create a migration file. So that means you are not matching those things, right? Uh, so you have to always try to create migration files and commit it once you are updating your model. Once you are starting, like you are other developer and you are grab the code. Like I have, we, we both are working in the team. I have updated my migration and I have committed it. Now you are you you are there and you want to grab those change. So you will pull the branch. Now you will apply migrate command because migration is already committed. You will apply migrate command so that you will get the same state of it. Have you answered your question? We are missing or not? Yeah. I. What we can do is, 
uh, you can you can fire uh, there is one command I think uh, check migration or yeah check you can use this check command this check command will check that whether migrations are uh, is according to your DB or not or, or model or not you can also do like make migration command if it is firing nothing like this like it will say no change is detected that means there is nothing to migrate okay yeah. sorry So now, as a part of it, Django framework is also having their own shell. Now, shell is very important part uh, uh, seen because normally you will, it's very similar, I mean, almost same to Python shell, but you can use your shell to play with your database and everything. Well, uh, We'll come to shell, but I think let, let me try to demonstrate the admin part first. So this is like we have created a model, right? Now second step. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. No, uh, that is not allowed because we are using ORM. So you will not touch DB anytime. You will not touch DB anytime. Like for even creating your database dump and everything, Django has commands to create a fixture or any other sort of data that data will be used. ORM is for them to isolate yourself to data. It will call us. <laughs> it will call us. See, it will not allow you actually. It will the app will not allow you. How I mean normal you assume you are using ORM, you are you are you have to go in only one way. There will be no possibility that you will do both things. Whatever the ORM is very flexible. Whatever change you want, you can do it for ORM. Nothing is there to do it manually, go to that and do it yourself. Now Django is a lot more popular for the Redmi interface too. I think it's a nicest advantage of Django framework. Whenever you are, whenever you are launching your application, admin app will help you. Admin app is there to boost you, to manage you, everything you, whatever you want to do, right? So, let us see what the admin app will do for us. Uh, I'm, now, I'm, I'm uh, I'm awaiting you with the new command which is called run server. It's for testing demonstration. A demonstration. Do not use run server command in your production. It's not for it. You have to use WSGI gate, right? And deploy your app, Python app according to that one. Uh, so let us start the server. Once you will run the, this command, you can see it has created my server on a port 8000 by default. Yeah, oh, it, it worked. This is a very basic line. If you are running server, right? Uh, that's very basic line by Django. Now for accessing your admin panel, you can directly say admin. Oh, without doing anything, it has already created an admin interface for us. Haven't done, we, we did nothing, right? We created our own model, but not done anything with the admin interface. So, this is for administration actually. Now, we will stop it first. We will create a super <coughs> user, right? Super user is for your application like admin. So, it, it can be done with the command for create super user. It will ask a bunch of questions like what should be the username, what should be the password, and everything. Have you made it? Now, password, uh, there are a few checks, so you have to 
et yhdyt sovi. And it will say, uh, they have created super user for us. Okay? Now let us start our server again. And whatever you have assigned as a username and password, you can call, you can apply those credentials and access it generally. Yeah, you can see uh, in one, one, one part, this is default interface called admin interface. <coughs> you have already access to these models. Now, assume you want, every website want to create a user and that, that's all, right? So this is built-in, built-in Django contribution module and all the fields like username, password, it's the first part of form when you will save, you will go to the other part of the form where uh, every default like email address, phone number, attack. So you do not have to implement it again and again. It has a very nice method called login, authenticate and everything. So it is all very simple once you want to add those functionalities to the app. Now what we will do is, let us link our post model with this admin app. So we will link it and we will see what kind of functionality it will generate for us. For linking your model with admin app, you have to go to the admin.py file. Okay? So this is admin app.py file. Now I am calling this admin function. Now one more thing, Django will, will already uh, will create your modules into the as, as a as a Python module part. So what you can do is you can you can call your module, you can import your module and use it. Here I am importing post model from the my app called blog. registered my post it with this modern admin site. Now I'm running this server again and I will refresh it first. I'm again logging. Without doing anything, you can see Django has already created one admin interface for us. Uh, what, for what purpose do you to use the admin interface? It's just to administrate your website, right? Uh, you can update, you can uh, create, you can delete, modify your existing records. Uh, those are already done, right? okay. Part of it, admin interface is not for creating. Uh, so you should not allow your other users to log in into your admin interface. I've seen it is a lot commonly, uh, lot com most commonly people are making this mistake. They allow their user to log in into the admin app and then they can 
They are not having permission, but still do. You should not allow any any of the one to get locked in into your app. No, email interface. It, it should be restricted only for email. Uh, the says for login. Now we already have one app in uh, one object. Now let us observe one another part. Uh, before it, yeah, right. So now we have not added author part. Okay. Now we will add the author field and see. This is like we are updating. Right? We have created one migration, now we are updating, adding new field. And I will demonstrate how Django is powerful in this thing. So, firstly, our author is a, which kind of field? Uh, can anyone guess? Author is not text, is it? User, yeah. So, it's, it will be a related field, right? So once a related field is there, uh, Django has a bunch of nice related field models. Uh, we can use it. Here it's a just one to one relationship. So we'll use foreign key. And with which model, right? So Django, I uh, will use the auth modules base class user and we'll link it with the present thing. There is one more thing. Uh, it is. It, it will not matter to you a more if you will use directly a user class, but it will matter if you are customizing your user class, right? So this, this. I mean, once you will use this user class as a relationship, it will create a lot of trouble on the next part. Like you are growing and you are customizing your user class, and you will say, now my user class is changed. By default, country I will not use. I will use this updated mode, user class as a base user class. So you can browse through documentation and always as a practice, do not include this. Use the default uh, user class, which is replicating to this model by default. But if you are changing, then it will automatically you know, break the code. That's very really vast thing, but yeah, it's a part of the time. So now we are adding one print code author. This is it. Just for an key we are adding. And as per my uh, previous guidelines, we will which command will fire? Make my decisions, right? Foreign key only, no field. But with 
which user record it will be linked to because it's not null, right? So that is called incompatible migrations, right? So it is very nice thing actually that you'll see, assume if this website was deployed, right? And we will have thousands of, thousands of records in production and we will create this kind of nonsense migration and we will merge. All my previous record will be linked to null. And that means I'll be there. So Django is very nice in these terms. It will warn you that this is incompatible migration and you have to certify, certify that you should be known that this kind of thing is happening around you. It's very nice thing. Really. So part of it, what we'll do, we'll apply this field to null. So by default it will create a null. You can, you can see these are two options. You can provide a default value like uh, whatever default record you have, or you can manually also set in your shell, right? And then you apply this migration, but we are doing it null, so I'm again updating. Blank and null are both similar, but the blank is for your form. So Django is also able to, will be able to generate the, uh, a form for it. And at that time, it will allow you to apply a blank record in it. Otherwise, it, it, suppose it's a military, then it will not allow blank. Null is for database level null. Okay, any volunteer around my military? You can see now I will run the command uh, make migration. It has created migration number two. Now what do I do? Can I guess? Yeah. Right. It's applied. Now I'm running server. Okay, this is running. Hold on, don't get This is an existing record, and now you see it has both are filled. Already displaying all the records of user. We have one record which is admin. We can link it and save it. All we did to that author assigned, right? So this is how you can use your admin app. Now we have a model, a perfect model. Now we'll come to the next part. Now we'll this this work through in. Uh, there are, yeah, you can go through this concrete endpoint to observe the built-in part. Uh, we have created super yeah, now let us go with the shell. So I was, I was uh, telling about the shell command. You have to just get shell as one command, right? And it will launch a Python shell for you, like this. Now you can play with the API of Django. So shell, uh, so we can we can play with this shell over here. I will introduce you with the bunch of shell utilities, and which is also very important, and the Django queries.
So I have intro I have imported the model boss. Now I can also create objects from here. I will also import the hookup, so first let us import it. This is user model. Now, uh, there are how to browse the objects, right? Query setter API. So, all I have to do is uh, the with the old composite command. So all as for browsing through all the records, uh, you can use it for creating all the records. You can also supply length like this. It's a iterator actually, right? so you can iterate over it. Length is, it will count all the available uh, objects on it. Now for, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. That went out. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, let us wait. Sorry, I mean, I tried to watch a new look of, but yeah, I think that's what I'm able to do. But this was really nice for the probably. So, till then, let us try to walk through all what I did and probably what I will do. Uh, so, I mean, once we go with the shell, shell is nicest thing I've seen because you can play with the your live data, you can check with the query set API and uh, because it's shell it will be directly applicable to the base part. You can use filtering. Uh, there is one filter part. Can you do it? Please do it with the next part. Uh, you can use filters. Mm, nothing is going to happen. So, filter will work like you will be able to uh, filter your part of object. It's, it's, it will directly replicate to the query your data basically. Like when, once we are firing the call, it will do it like select star from our database name, right? So under the root, it will fire that query it will, to the database, it will get the result, and then give it to us. When we'll do filter and dot that command, it will automatically fire that query like select uh, whatever parameter is, like ID and everything, or whatever field we want, and then where close, and then all the other stuff. We have related records. For example, post and user is related, right? So that that will perform a join under the root, right? So that that responsibility is of OI. All this stuff will OI will do for us. And assume, suppose we are changing from MySQL to Postgres, those those because that are SQL compatible, but still there are few syntax which are uh, DB specific. And in that term, if you are using OI, that OI will know that if it is Postgres, okay, I'll try this one. Yeah. 
How many tanks? Yeah. Yeah, it's Oh, <laughs> So it will hold all the things it will do. If it is Postgres, it will fire those Postgres specific queries. And MySQL, it will fire those specific queries. And it's all due to one, right? Oh, yeah. So we are up again. Now, let, this, is, this, this is actually firing a select query on our model. Now I am trying to filter one. That is, for getting single object, we can use get method like this, and we can supply all, all of our uh, filters over here. So, for example, I want to get a record whose username is n. Right? So, I will say user equal to n. And that will, that will give me this record, right? One single record. I can also assign this record like A is equal to this like object, like object, right? In a class object. Now I can also update. Like this. And then call a save with A dot save. You can see, it will change to test. This is update query. Once you will save, it will update, it will fire update query on your data as automatically. So this is like it will save you from all those SQL hazards, right? And it's very simple. Behaving just like an object, right? If there is the user is not available, like our admin will not be available now, then it will fire does not exist exception. Like this. What else? Does not exist, right? Because it's not available in our data. We can also now we can if we want to filter a bunch of records, for example, it will give us few bunch of records, then we'll say we can use filter. is very base one and we can apply uh, multiple things or like it will fire already in like if user is equal to test and is start is true it is giving us because we have only one record but it can also give more than one right it's a list. Uh, it's each record object actually. So we'll each record it. Any doubts on this query certificate? There are filtering also. Like for example, let us do it in our post mode. The query set also. with our, uh, I can do also that kind of comparison. Uh, always do a comparison with the double in the score. There are various operators like in E, I mean, less than, greater than everything. So you can use it. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I will now create one new blog object called B1 and uh, I'm no, called P1, which is post1. And I'll say post and then I'll assign all those stuff. Where is our A again? P1 is that this is this has not created in our DB, it's created an object. When we will call save, it will actually buy the DB. Now, 
as long to one post. And we can also use a for loop. And second, first and second part. We have printed post to title. Right? So this is this is attribute we are accessing. We can like how a dot user test. So this is how you can create particular column value. Any doubts on this part? Should we move forward? Uh, now what we are doing that uh, we are moving to the templates part which is uh, like we are directly creating HTML templates. Django has their own language uh, in a template templating uh, so you can use it. Now after in the latest versions you have the flexibility to decide your template engine like you can choose uh, the popular template engines also uh, and you can edit if you want to use the default one, you can also do it. These are the HTML templating part. So what I'm doing is uh, always you have to create one base template. So base template is like a base structure. And then create a new template which inherits those base templates. Which is a very nice way because, for example, you want to change your CSS or any new JavaScript, you will not update all the templates. You will update just base and it will inherit all the sub stuff. Right? So I'm creating base template. So first go to your app directory. And now I am creating one directory called templates. Now templates directory is there under my app. Now what I'm doing is I am creating templates for my app specifically. So I will create some directory called blog. Now it may sound stupid that blog will have their own template, right? Why I'm creating sub directory blog? But as a as a part of application, sometimes you will customize the other templates. Like for example, I can also customize the templates which are provided by my application. So I will up fire update on those parts. And at that time, yeah. my view, my templating view should be specific. Like for example, I am customizing the admin interface uh, before template, which I can do. So I can create an admin and then I can assign all the customized template in there. So all the other user gets get, get some separation. So blow here remains I am customizing a template for my present directory. So I'm creating another subdirectory for blow. And keep this practice always. Now here we are creating base template for base dot HTML. Sign and the 
Charlie Brick is, is the uh, part of Django syntax, right? And this will give us the flexibility while rendering those. This is based. Now I'm creating one another template. Or list .html. Now what I am doing is I am I'll do just nothing. I will extend my base template first with this index. See, yeah, we did just this for for a while. Now I am creating views for URLs and views for it. This 
So regular expressions are part of Python actually. Uh, I have almost every programming language has the regular expressions. Django is popular for these regular expressions also because you'll see uh, this type of URL comparisons is done with the regular expressions. Now we call it regex as a DT way. Uh, so regex is it will compile on a first thing. Like uh, for example, I'm deploying my Django server, I'll start. So my server will compile all the Django regular expressions first, and then when the request is coming, those regular compiled part is applied to the incoming request. And it will call the matching one, right? It's a super boosty stuff rather than a manual compression, right? So you will have to learn a bit regular expressions to make a little customization for your this app and everything. Uh, I believe that it's not part of this one, but uh, you can also use the nice tutorial over how to regex in uh, Python. And uh, at Django, Django there is one tutorial on regular expression. You can also grab the documentation of the regular expression. So here I, this means that I'm just starting and ending without anything, okay? Without nothing, without anything, right? Now this is my blob URL. Now I will link my blob URL to this, uh, my website. This is the, there are two ways to import. I'm not doing an explicit import over here, but this string will be automatically remapped by my Django to my blog module, blog app first, and then it will call, include the URL part. It will find the URL uh, included parameters over there. And it will all follow the post as a, my app's uh, URL. Is there any doubt on this thing? It's a little bit complicated at the first end, but once you are, once you start developing your application, you'll see it's a super crazy. It's a super crazy thing. Like that. So I'm saving it. Now let us run our server. I hope you will not have any errors. Concept of for loop in a template, so you can use it. That's so why I'm using that syntax. Uh, what I'm creating is I'm creating a HTML table so that it can map all the things nicely, and uh, it will iterate over the bunch of things. This 
differences or looks it takes in a temple. Just like that. This is my template. I can provide arguments from I mean, a different text over here in this dictionary. So I'll say post. See the result. We are running our server. Can you see? Cost, log, post, over, over, one object. Let us see that.
slash id will be a number actually, it's a variable, right? So creating a pattern like this, we will need a this regular equation. Here, let us write. So this is a part of regular expression syntax. A square bracket is always a variable. I will say post id. Okay, and then I'll write a regular expression, which is, this is range, 0 to 9, because it will be always number. Plus means any number without any text. Then slash d also you can use as a one subclass. And then you close it, and then you'll have this one, which is over in your regular expression, ending your regular expression, and slash because slash will make a more sense to me. Now, we will bind our view. We are not created, but we can directly bind. Like view dot will say, let us, I'm planning to uh, just name it single. And I'll say, so you can see, this one will launch all the post, and this one, I mean this regular expression, will grab the particular number and assign it as a post ID. This is a variable, right? Post ID. Now, there is one other parameter over here which will call name. This is very handy parameter to call your URL patterns. I'll say single. Why this is helpful? <coughs> Assume a situation you are creating a bunch of things and you assign a static URL. Like when we start, it was decided to call it. Uh, Sorry, uh, when we start, it was decided to call it uh, like with a slash id url and we did few development we deployed and then after at the end we realized okay now our so called project manager is telling to change it to slash new id now if that was a static url assume like you have to render find grab all the occurrence of that and then you try to update it but if you of assigned a URL pattern with the name, then Django has a nice functionality to identify that change and to update the URL pattern automatically. We will see it will make more sense when we implement it. So this is the regular expression pattern. There are a few other patterns. You will learn regular expression and you will be more comfortable with it. Now we are binding this URL pattern with creating our view. So we will create a single view which is named single. So create a request. Now, as you will aware, we had a few of So those, those that, that part in the regular expression will be assigned as ID to us with this view. <coughs> so what we will do, we will filter, we will apply a filter. Right? So single object post equal Is it making sense? Right? We are grabbing one record and we will do assign it over here. Now let us create a template for rendering a single. Now we are doing like this. 
of Python. He is our host of Python. So this is single and we are just end blocking, displaying single post. We are saving it, we are running our server.
can see this is the same. I'll also change in this expression and it is 404. So that if 4 is not existing, uh, it, will, it will do it 404. And this is the template for it. So this is the post, like doing the same thing, right? And uh, we can use it. और खोल दो खोल दो I think yeah so I'm not sure where is my virtual environment actually I have, I do have created a requirements to DNC system. part is was to create a link over here. So this is my list post and when I will once I click it will redirect me to the single post. And I can go back, I can link to my another objects. So once my objects are increasing it will link and redirect me to the single post. Right? Uh, this is See, this is the URL syntax you can grab as a for creating a link, and this is the name of my view function. What we named over the URL part in a controller, single post. We were named the single, right? So this is our name here, single post, and then we are passing the ID like this ID, and it will all generate a link, HTTP link for us, assigned with the title, right? Uh, yeah, so just one slide more. How to learn the Django? Uh, normally, people will guide you with a few videos and everything. Uh, my personal suggestion is to download the documentation, go through the tutorial section one to six, and then do contribution. Like there are projects, uh, many projects. You can you can go to your community and tell them. We will make a website for you if you want. All the other stuff you can do, you can reach you in school and you can say, well, I will make a website for you. And we have also Python Express, which is completely written in Django. Why project uh, from Python uh, PSSN, Python Software Society of India. You can also start contributing to it. It will, it, Django has a really, very hard curve once you start. But rather than if you are tutorials, the live, live stuff will teach you most nicer things. You will, uh, you will be able to identify the why things are uh, working and why things are like this in general. It's not complicated, but it's to make you flexible, right? And then you will get to the documentation. 1500 pages of documentation is there. Everything is there. Nobody will read it. Uh, you will read what you, you need, right? Very nice things. Uh, yeah, this link is for feedback. Uh, for Google Forms, small forms there. You can, you can uh, please don't forget to add your feedback uh, over it. It will help me. Uh, yeah, so I'm done. Any question answers? I can answer any questions here. Yeah.
Are there any questions from you people? Uh, you have to ask it. This one? So for everyone else, uh, we are moving the panel discussion to lecture hall two. So I would request you all to please go downstairs for the panel discussion. Thank you. Lecture hall 2 is right downstairs, the room to the left.